Howdy. It's May 16th, 2021. This is El Hay, living somewhere north of Fairbanks, Alaska. A subarctic beekeeper, one of the many. And today, I'm frustrated. <laughs> I am frustrated because lighting a bee smoker is one of my least favorite things. Although I do appreciate the smoke and it works. One of my kids got me these little bee smoker pellets for Christmas that actually smell pleasant. They've got like spearmint leaves and peppermint leaves and stuff. And they work great, but I have a heck of a time keeping my smoker lit. That, of course, is my fault. It is what it is. So today, it is about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I moved all the hives from the deck over to the old bee yard. It's not something I wanted to do. But I was overruled by the family. They didn't want the bees on the deck anymore. <laughs> to my chagrin, because they were doing great on the deck. Absolutely wonderful. So the old bee yard is great, except that I've used it so many years that ants have built little, I don't know, subterranean caverns and such and the voles love it too because they've had their share of getting into hives so I had to take apart my old stands and think of new stands when I'm thinking of these things I think of what other things can I use that are not bee related what might I have that I can use and I have two old foldable twin bed frames and believe it or not, they make great hive stands because they're metal. And I don't want any more ants. So I put glass jelly jars under each of the legs, and I'll put water in them. That way when the ants try to get in, they won't be able to get up the legs. They'll drown. And it won't hurt the bees. And they're about, these frames are about six feet long. So it looks like I can get five hives next to each other, maybe four hives in a nuke. Since I've moved all my hives, one of the things I had to do is plug up the hives, ratchet strap the hives. First, before that, I had to dump the syrup that they're not taking anymore anyways. That's how you know when to stop giving them syrup is when they stop taking it. So I had to ratchet strap those hives up, secure the entrance, pick them up, load them onto my hand truck, take them off the deck, down the ramp, through the peonies, across the rocks, over the stream, into the bee yard without them moving too much because I didn't want to disrupt the bees. But they didn't care they were disrupted anyways. But I moved them all. And now I've realized that my hives that made over the winter need another box. Some people put honey supers on. So I don't use honey supers unless I'm out of deep boxes. I prefer just to use deeps. That way all the frames are the same, the boxes are the same. I'm going to add deep boxes to the hives that overwintered because the colonies are big enough where they need more space or they could swarm. It's really early in the season for this, but it's because they made it through the winter and I just spotted a yellow jacket. Oh, trying to get in the hive. Stand by. Okay, it's gone. That's another problem with the bee yard, is the yellow jackets. Boy, they were ruthless last year. They were so ruthless, I was using my pancake flipper to smack them, like whack-a-mole, but smack a wasp instead. And it still wasn't making a big dent in their population. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... 8, 9, 10, 11 wasp traps around the bee yard and the deck area. And for some reason, they want to come over near the beehives. If I was a wasp, I would go to the wasp traps. There's some kind of attractant in there that lures them in. Apparently it's not as alluring as the smell of bees and honey. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... Another box to the colonies that are large and that need more space in order to prevent swarming. And since our mornings are still cool, 
And believe it or not, we still have some snow in low areas. I'm going to reverse the boxes. So I've got the box ready that's got 10 frames in it. All of them have drawn comb. And I am going to... I laugh because it's always messy. I was going to say delicately, but it's not delicate. I am going to open the hive, lift up the current deep that's on there, full of frames and full of bees. Hope that they don't mind me too much, but they do. And then I'm going to set that aside. And I usually set that on a piece of foam board, a big piece of foam board, because I don't want to lose the queen. I don't want to lose any bees. I find it's always helpful to have a big piece of foam board available for that kind of thing. So I'll set the original deep on the foam board with the lid on top, and then I will put on the new box on the bottom. And then I'll put the original deep onto the top that has all the bees in it. So traditionally you do the reverse. You just add the top box to the top, or you just add the new box to the top. But since the mornings are cold, I'm gonna reverse it. It's something we do sometimes in the north, but you can do it anywhere else too, if it's cold, if you get cold mornings. And the queen will just move down and lay in that bottom box and all will be right with your bee yard. All right, I'll check in later. Have a great day. Everything is copyrighted and all rights reserved. Take care.